In the 17th century, sometime around 1666, a scientist by the name of Isaac Newton was sitting in the garden of his house, Woolsthorpe Manor, when out of the corner of his eye, he noticed something. Something he'd seen a thousand times before, something that almost everyone had witnessed at some point in their life. An apple falling from a nearby tree. But this got Isaac thinking. What caused the apple to fall? Why did the apple fall down towards the ground? And what was this mysterious, invisible force that pulled the apple towards the earth? That moment then planted the metaphorical seed in Isaac's mind, which then grew into his theory of universal gravitation. The theory of gravity. Nowadays we understand gravity fairly well. Very well, in fact. If you throw a tennis ball at your friend, you can pretty reliably calculate the exact path the ball is going to take through the air. Another thing we know about gravity is that it's weak. Very weak. In fact, it's way weaker than the three other fundamental forces. But how can we measure the strength of gravity here on Earth? Well... Gravity causes everything to accelerate towards the ground, whether that be an apple from a tree, your phone that you've just dropped, or a completely invaluable Lego set that your co-worker doesn't know you're holding. Point being, the acceleration due to gravity is a good metric for understanding how strong gravity is in your local area. And we can measure this acceleration due to gravity quite easily, using a simple pendulum. In order to measure acceleration due to gravity at home, here's what you're going to need. Some string, a small weight, ideally something that won't hurt anyone or break anything once it's swinging, an open space to swing your pendulum, a stopwatch, a tape measure, some paper and a pen, and a calculator. Okay, let's get going. First things first, attach your weight to your string and fasten securely. Attach the top of the pendulum to something sturdy, solid and stable, so that the pendulum swings only under its own influence. A door frame is a good option, but make sure that everyone knows the experiment is going on to avoid any injury. Now, use your tape measure to measure the length from the top of the string to the centre of the weight. Make sure you write this down so that you don't forget it. Get your stopwatch ready and start the pendulum swinging. Make sure you don't give it a push, just gently release it from your hand and let it swing under its own influence. Start the stopwatch when the pendulum passes the midpoint of its swing and count 10 swings. Once it reaches the midpoint again after 10 swings, stop the stopwatch. Write down the time it took for the pendulum to do those 10 swings. Helpful hint, make your table of results beforehand like I have done. If you want a better result, repeat this experiment three or more times like I have and then find a mean average of all of the times. That average will then be your best measurement of time taken for 10 oscillations. Now time for some more involved maths. If you'd like to skip this part, you can use our online calculator tool to find your value of G. Just follow the link at the top of the description and skip ahead to this time in the video. However, if you're one of those weird people that enjoys the hard maths, that's, that, that's also me, I'm, I'm one of those weird people, then keep watching. <sighs> A pendulum is a simple harmonic oscillator, and by using this equation associated with a simple oscillating pendulum, we can find G. We know L, the length of the pendulum, as we measured that earlier, so now we need T, the time it takes for the pendulum to do one swing. We know how long it took for it to do 10 swings, so we can just divide this time by 10 to find the time taken for a single swing. Now we can rearrange this equation to make G the subject and plug in our numbers to get our answer for G. And that's it. We're done. How did you do? What value of G did you get? Either comment it down below or tell us on one of our social media pages on screen now. Here's a question for you. If we went 1.1 kilometers underground into our underground laboratory, do you reckon the value for G is going to be higher or lower? We here at Bowlby have thought long and hard about this and we've asked some very prestigious people for their opinions, but no one can seem to agree. But that's all going to change very soon. The next video you see on this channel is going to be from me. I'm going to be finding out once and for all, is the acceleration due to gravity higher or lower in our underground laboratory? So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.